Hello, this is the second of two videos dealing with the calculations for a set of external timber stairs. So if you haven't watched the first video, I suggest you go and watch it because it's going to be covering some basic terminology and calculations, which uh, some of which we'll be repeating here. This is a clip from the first video, just showing a bit of terminology that we're going to be working with. So we've got our finished floor levels, our individual rises, our total rise, our individual goings, and our total going. And if you haven't run through that yet, please open up the first video and, uh, and have a look at that. There's the other line that we were spoke about in the first video, which is our margin line, which touches the front edge of all of our treads and landings. And here is an example that we're going to be working with today. So this is the same veranda that we used in the first video, our same ground line which slopes away from the house. But this time, instead of a single flight of steps, we're going to have a landing in the middle of our steps. So there's just a little bit of extra terminology that we're going to deal with. Let's start with our finished floor levels, which we dealt with in the first video the location at which our stairs end down the bottom and our veranda level up the top. There are our finished floor levels. There's our total rise from finished floor level to finished floor level. And there's our total going measured from first rise to last rise. And of course, our rise and our going, which for the sake of clarity, I'll refer to as individual rise and individual going, just so it doesn't get confusing. Now the next bit of terminology is a bit different. We have rise of lower flight and rise of upper flight. And you'll notice if I add those two rises together, that will equal the total rise that we had here earlier. So just like all of the individual rises add up to our total rise, our rises of flights added up equals our total rise as well. And of course that means we've got going of lower flight and a going of upper flight as well. And you'll notice in between the two is the length of our landing. And again, all of those three added up will equal the total going that we end up with. So it's important to know what this length of the landing is. And usually that just comes straight off the plan. It should be marked on there. Here's the steps that we had from the first video. They're all exactly the same steps. Only in the first video we crossed out landings because we didn't deal with it, but we will be dealing with them in this video. And that just makes a little bit of a difference when we get to our goings. So I'm going to go through the same process though. We're going to work out our rises first, then worry about our landings, and then work out our goings, and then just finish off by checking all of our measurements are correct. So in the first video, you'll remember we ran our laser line or our straight edge out here nice and level. We estimated where we thought the stairs would finish. So if I come down on a bit of an angle, across on a bit of a landing, and then down on an angle, I think we're going to end up about here. And I'm just going to repeat the same measurements that we had in the first video. We measured a total rise of 15.30. We divided it by a trial rise, and we ended up with nine rises at 170 each. Now we're going to think about landing. For the sake of this example, I'm going to, I'm going to say that this landing is one meters long. Now, it's important to remember that as soon as we put a landing in, it splits our stair into two sections. So I'm going to split these rises up into an upper flight and a lower flight. So I've decided I want the stairs as close as I can to the middle. I've got an odd number of rises. So I need to decide how many rises are going in the top and how many going in the bottom. So I've decided I'm going to put four rises in the bottom flight and I'm going to put five rises in the upper flight. So that just leaves four at 170 and five at 170. I've just taken our total number of rises and separated them. Now that we're going to work out our individual going, we're going to do the same thing. I'm just using 250mm wide hardwood for my treads, so I'm going to have a 250 going. So again, that has to be split up to our upper and lower flight. Now, if you remember from the first video, we always have one less going 
than we do rises in a single flight of steps. And it's important to remember that's in a single flight, not in the total stair. Our total number of rises is nine. But in the lower flight, we're only going to have three. And in our upper flight, we're going to have four because in each single flight, it's one less. So you'll notice if we add these two up, we only have seven rises, not eight. And that's because each landing takes away one going. So our total going is going to be simply our lower and upper flight added together with our landing added in as well. So we've got a total going of lower flight of 750, a total going of upper flight of 1 metre, and that's simply 3 times 250 for the lower, 4 times 250 for the upper. We're going to add our 1 metre landing in, and that gives us a total going of 2750. So the next step, exactly the same as we covered in the first video, we're going to check and confirm all of our measurements. We now have goings that we can work with. So there's our horizontal line, and just to help out, I've taken away a, little, a few of those words up there. So we can measure out the total going of our upper flight, and that gives us a position where we can dig some holes and concrete some posts in. We can go out the length of our landing, and that helps us to locate the other posts. We can concrete them in, and we can go out the length of our lower flight, or the total going of our lower flight. And as you can see, just like in the first video, our estimate was not quite exactly right. So I'm going to move my measuring tape into there, re-measure our total rise, and just like before, I have to adjust the total rise a little bit to make everything nice and accurate, and that changes our rises to 168. And if you're not sure why, just go back to the first video and have a look. So there's our calculations done. We also can check that all of our rises, our goings and our ratio are legal. And that, of course, we covered in the first video. So we know this set of stairs is going to be legal. So that's basically the finished look of the set of stairs that we have just calculated out. There's all of our steps that we went through. Total rise, individual rise. When we consider the landings, that separates into our lower and upper flight. Then we worked out our goings. We checked and confirmed our measurements. So, of course, that leaves working out the stringers. So, of course, we have two lots of stringers because we've got two flights of steps. You can see the lower flight looks very similar to the shape of the steps in the first video. Stringer sits on top of the bottom tread, checked into the post. You can see this upper set of string is a little bit different, so it's got to check out at both ends. But we can work out the length of them exactly the same way that we worked them out in the first video. And hopefully you remember the formula. We did number of rises times 300. So I'm going to work this out twice. There's a number of rises for our lower flight times 300. That means a length of timber 1,200 long. And in the upper flight, of course, we've got five rises times 300. That gives us a length of 1,500 for the top flight stringers. I want to explain why I insist on working out the goings of our individual flights. It is possible to just look at our rises up here and just say nine rises eight goings, I'll take a going away and then add the landing and come up with a total figure without working out our individual goings. But it's important to work out what the individual flight goings are, and I can explain why in this drawing. So this is a view from the top. So we're looking down from the top on a plan of our veranda up here. Let's look at a straight flight of steps. Once we've calculated everything, we work out our upper flight going, and that's where our posts are going to go. We can measure our total going, and this is where our stairs will end, and that's the spot where we can recheck our rise. There's our straight edge or our laser line where you've rechecked the rise, 
and this is the location of our finished floor level at the bottom. And so we will build a set of stairs like that. And that's pretty well exactly what I've done during this video. So over here we're going to look at something slightly different. This is going to be a set of stairs that comes out to a landing but around the corner. So we'll do the same thing. We'll bring our upper flight going out, which will locate our posts. But this time our lower flight going comes out on the side. And that sometimes happens with a set of stairs on a house. That means this is the spot which we're going to call our finished floor level at the bottom, which means there is our straight edge or our laser line where we are going to recheck our total rise and make sure our calculations are correct. And that's the location where, they, where it gets built. So you can see in this set of stairs, we don't have a single total going for the entire stairs because it's not in a straight line. And that's why if I just go back to that previous slide, that's why I always separate upper and lower flight. And it's simply just reusing all the figures that we've used up in our original calculation. Thank you very much for your time.